see this okay? Yeah. The title of my speech is Money Turkey. How many of you have ever visited Turkey? Yes, one. So Roxy can attest to what I'm going to say today. I visited Turkey, just to explain a little bit about it, is a country, it's predominantly Muslim country, but it's the most westernized Muslim country. And it's right in the middle of Asia and Europe, so you can get to be in two continents at the same time. I took a trip there in 2006 while I was living in Cyprus, along with my two friends, Sam and Alicia. And we went to Turkey for a couple of days, about four or five days. We, we visited Istanbul, which is a capital, and I don't have a pointer, I apologize, but it's right up there on the northwest side of Turkey. We also got to spend a few days in the southern part, right by, in, in Shejme, if you see where it says Izmir, which I know I can't really point, but it's a couple hours down. So we got to get a good taste of what it means to be in Turkey. We had no prior experience of what to expect. We didn't know anyone from there. And when we crossed into the Turkish border from Greece, we were literally awakened, literally, in the middle of the night. We were sleeping in our cabin because we were trying, uh, traveling via train. And all of a sudden, our cabin door slams open and then tenant comes in there, puts, turns the lights on, and didn't say a word, just kept on walking. So we were thinking, what's going on? Kind of creepy. <laughs> we found out that this was a border checkpoint, and we had to get our visas. As we continued into Turkey, it started to get light, and we got the chance to see the countryside, which was beautiful. The only thing that kind of was weird about it was the fact that there were Turkish flags and pictures of Ataturk all over the countryside. There could be a deserted <laughs> field, but there's a picture of Ataturk. He's always watching you. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> so <laughs> once we got into his school, we were pleasantly surprised that it's actually a huge tourist spot. But on the way to Istanbul, I just wanted to show you some of the slides, uh, some of the countryside that we passed throughout. This was just, this was an area that um, a lot of the places in Turkey were not developed simply because every time there was a regime change, they would stop projects. So it was a little bit disappointing to see a beautiful country in ruins. This is the government building. And throughout the area, there's lots of castles. That was one of them. When we got into Istanbul, we were amazed at how many things there were to do. The Blue Mosque, I'm sure maybe you have seen pictures of it previously, but that is the place where a lot of people gather to worship on a Friday night. There's also the uh, Aya Sophia right here, and the Grand Bazaar. The Grand Bazaar is a zoo. I mean, literally, there it's like a maze. You just never stop walking. And it's crazy, because as soon as you catch someone's eye, you're done for. <laughs> you have to know how to bargain to be there. And so I did my best to make sure that there was no eye contact, <laughs> and I just kept walking. Unfortunately, my friend, Sam, she started up a conversation with a vendor. <laughs> Apparently, he had an uncle who lived in Pennsylvania, or so he says. <laughs> so the next thing I know, his friend is talking to me. And now we have something in common because our friends are talking. <laughs> By the end of this conversation, we all made dinner plans for later on that night. And we were having a great time, okay? Just laughing, talking, and we're thinking, oh, well, at least finally some normal people. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, my new companion turns towards me and he's saying, he pops the question, will you marry me? 
Whoa. I will give your father 10,000 camels for you. Oh. <laughs> and we all started laughing. The three of us started laughing because we were thinking he was joking. He wasn't. He got offended that I did not take him seriously and because it was apparently a very good offer. <laughs> expect whether you meet random people or go to their houses for dinner or you could take a man up on his off on the street to take her around for the day one thing that one good thing that did come out of it uh, this gentleman actually took us around to the black sea which would have been very hard to get to and then he also took us to this one castle now it's hard to see everything but this castle was just enormous. It was almost like a fortress. But the neat thing is that we never would have seen this without taking, being adventurous and taking him off it on his offer. And uh, this is, these are the guys that kind of invaded our privacy here. <laughs> One of the things that we, the area that we stayed at um, was right in the middle of the city. and. Well, throughout our travels, we always stayed at hostels. I don't know if you're familiar with them. What a great way to travel. You get to meet people from all over the country, uh, from all over the world. And they always had their breakfast places on top of a roof, which was very neat. Um, but you get to meet a lot of people, exchange ideas of places you still need to see. And this is just other places uh, from our hostel that you could take a look at. After our Istanbul trip, we got down to Shezmi, which was the small resort town south of Istanbul. And this is Shezmi. When we arrived there, it was deserted because it was still in the off season and no one was there. But we managed to find a travel agency. The gentleman there was very nice. He, you know, showed us where we can stay and we were surprised to find three young gentlemen at our door who, again, took us around town and uh, we got to go to the Turkish baths, uh, the mineral springs, and uh, these are the mineral springs, which was awesome because it was pretty chilly, kind of like the weather is today, and it was very, very warm, hot water, which looks like it's part of the, the sea. So, later on that night, they invited, well, we felt obligated to take them out to dinner as a thank you, but they insisted that we come over to their house for dinner, for a cookout. And they tried to make us feel at home and make burgers, which were not really good, but the, the fact was that they really tried to make us feel welcome. So it was such a good experience. Uh, we saw lots of people, met a, met a lot of people, saw lots of things. And, you know, if anything, I would do it all over again. So I encourage you, if given the chance, go outside your comfort zones, go travel to a place that you never thought you would, and experience the many things that life has to offer. Thank you.